वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे as I said, we're not trying to convert people, we're just raising awareness. Um, the message of Sikhism is, is pretty straightforward. That there's one creator who's all around us. He's not somewhere separate from the world. He made us, he's source of everything and is all around us. And that this one, the light of that one is inside every single human being. Regardless of they're you know, male or female, uh, Chinese, black, whatever color you can think about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, gay or straight, uh, whatever religion matter. they are, it doesn't <laughs> matter. The one's light inside every single human being, yeah? Yeah. So whatever, I think that's 4.5 billion or 6 billion, I don't know. Whichever where it is, we, everybody's got the light of God inside them. Um, and that uh, the one's light, it can be accessed and we can actually feel connected to the one. And that's through meditation, uh, through serving people uh, and through honest living, we can actually activate our higher center, which is up here. It's like, a, an, a, like an energy center. Mm -hmm. and you can connect to this one. It's like a, a very blissful experience. The message is very simple. The one made us. We're all the same. And we're meant to connect to that one. Um, and the gurus, they travel like, there was 10 gurus. The first one was uh, 1469. And Guru Nanak, he traveled like, he's the second most traveled person in history. Um, mm -hmm. He traveled to like Rome, uh, up to Mecca, uh, down to, to Tibet and to Sri Lanka as well. And he engaged with people of all religions. And he, he was always trying to like preach his message of oneness of humankind, that there should be equality and freedom. Obviously, uh, a lot of people didn't buy that at that time. You know, 500 years ago, the world was very divided. Mm -hmm. um, so he came back to Punjab and he set up his own community of people that were following him. Um, the fifth guru, because it went from guru to guru, um, the fifth guru, he made a town, you might have heard about it, Amritsar, or the Golden Temple? No. No? What do you study, by the way? I study sociology. Okay. Well, it's be an interesting study for you. I mean, yeah. uh, when, <laughs> they made this, uh, this, this like, famous temple, it's quite iconic. Um, it's like a pool of water, inside the pool of water is, is the temple. What's interesting about this place is, he made it to reflect the Sikh principles. So first, it's got four doors on all four sides, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like saying everybody's welcome. Yeah. Because you know, like for example, if you're, a, if you're not a Muslim, you can't go to Mecca. No, yeah? that's true. Right, and there's some temples in India, if you're not a high caste uh, Hindu, you can't go inside. Yeah, I actually read somewhere that uh, Sikhism is like the only religion that doesn't like have an exclusive exclusivity claim within it. Yeah, we don't claim, we, we're inclusive to us, God, exactly. Yeah, so people of other religions can come here as well. They always claim like their religion is the only religion and yeah. the only right one, yeah, but yeah. it's like one of the only ones that doesn't. Yeah, we, 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 like, we're very good. inclusive in that way. Yeah, There's only one good. God, right? So yeah. yeah and in definitely. fact, when Guru Nanak went to Mecca, they asked him that question. They said to him, who's better then? Tell us, is it a Hindu better or a Muslim better? And Guru Nanak's answer was very straightforward. He said that um, both will cry without good actions. Mm. You know, so they don't do any we're good all, in this life. They're, gonna, they're both going to suffer, right? Exactly. But most, but pe something. people assume that because if you have a label of a religion, that you're going to get in. But the label itself means nothing. It's what you individually do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not even religious myself. So. Most people nowadays, to be honest, aren't. Yeah. No, it's true. But, and again, uh, religion, because religions become so much about a label, it's not about the actual, what's the essence of the, of the person, are they connecting or not? Mm -hmm. People just want to get you into the religion, put the stamp on you. It's like a business. And it's, well, exactly, get the money off you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Yeah. And so that's part, part of the problem. But we're more, like, we're more spiritual than we're trying to make yeah. a religion, you know? Um, and I'll talk about that in a second, because when the Gurus made this, what's interesting about the, this temple is that it's one of the few temples in the world where you go down. The outside land is higher, and you step down towards God. It's like humility. Yeah. You have to, it just shows humility, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, he was the, guru, the fifth guru, they were persecuted by the Muslims and they were killed actually because they refused to convert, yeah. right? But then check this out, his son, who was the next guru, didn't hold a grudge against Islam. Obviously, people that did it were wrong, but not against the whole of Islam. And at one point, he was ruling this land called uh, a city and the mu Muslims of that city came to him and said, look, uh, we haven't got enough money for a mosque. And so he made them a mosque. Because like, you know, God is one, yeah. right? So there's nothing wrong with you having a mosque. Uh, we, play in a, we pray in a Gurdwara, you can pray in a mosque. Yeah. So that was like egalitarian That's philosophy of fair, like... Yeah. Sensitive, yeah. Yeah, compassionate, exactly. ruling. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, exactly, that actually our ideal of um, what the world should be like is a, is a, is a world based upon compassion. Yeah. That's like basically, for us, uh, righteousness and justice comes from compassion. That's yeah. the exact quote, you know, it's, like, it's born of compassion. That's um, a reasonable way to think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we haven't got compassion, like, there's no real niceness, you know. Yeah. We just we just like want to use people for what we want or whatever. Just convert, yeah, convert them. Or, people I don't are know. like instruments yeah. too often in capitalism. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Sociology, yeah. yeah. I did economics, by the way, in philosophy. Oh, did you? Right yeah, on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So that's how Where I got into. I, I got into it myself. I was at Oxford. Oxford? Yeah. In yeah. The States? No, no, no. Oxford in uh, yeah, Oxford, England. Oh, where? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. Got, got a few brains on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah or well, just you know, uh, that's how I got into religion. I, I was studying philosophy, um, and then I was like, you, you know, theology. Then? Uh, well, I was kind of. I did philosophy of religion, uh, but not really. Uh, but and I was, I was like, I was, a, I was like you. I, I'm having a religion really. I wasn't really following anything. Uh, and then when I started looking into philosophy, I was like, this is quite mundane. But I really like the Greek philosophers, you know, Plato, yeah, Aristotle. Yeah, I've uh, studied some philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like and those. I found that really interesting. But what I found was that they didn't really have a concept of what Plato was talking about. Like he talks about the truth-loving people, the philosopher king, but no one really got it. And the gurus, I think, were onto the right kind of idea because they were kings. Those guys. Yeah, the yeah. gurus. They, they were kings, but they also happened to be uh, benevolent rulers. And they were benevolent rulers, but they were also spiritual rulers. You see, so they had the both elements yeah. of truth-loving. Yeah. So, so, so that was one thing the sixth guru did. But his son, uh, the ninth guru, he actually um, gave his life to save Hinduism. So the Muslims were again persecuting people and saying, look, you should convert to, uh, to Islam. And they came to him for help. Now, this, check this out. So the head of a religion, who's not even a Hindu, uh, help, uh, saves Hinduism um, from being extinct. But in doing so, he gives his own life. He knew he was going to be behead, be, die for it. So he was actually beheaded. You know, for saving other persons, you know, freedom of, of, of practice. It's like a martyr for another cause. <laughs> for, for the freedom of for the for, for freedom, everybody should I have guess the freedom. He's a martyr for his cause. Yeah, yeah it's his cause, but it's actually uh, we we see mankind as our cause. We don't really distinguish. Like, it doesn't matter what religion you are. You know, your man's ma you know mankind is our cause. Yeah? I like that. Yeah, so yeah. he's just a martyr then. Yeah, no, yeah, a martyr for yeah. the world. Rebel with a cause, yeah. yeah no <laughs> yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But Definitely. um. Now he so so you can imagine like you know that although we've been persecuted um, at the same time the gurus never bore a grudge against the religion because what was interesting is that at the moment that uh, the tenth guru he gave guruship the eleventh or eternal guruship to the text so now if you go to a Sikh temple all you will see is people bowing down to the text right and the gurus compiled that themselves it wasn't like after they'd passed away or somebody came along and changed words they compiled it themselves yeah. but what's really cool is you were like this right is that when they compiled it they actually put in scripture. Uh, of people of other religions. So there was like Muslims and Hindus who were kind of very spiritually high and they become one with God as far as we're concerned, that you can become one with God. Yeah. So they transcended religion and they put their writings in there to show us Sikhs that God is not exclusive. It's not God is not ours. We belong to God, but God doesn't belong to us only, you know? Yeah. And so they put that in to make us like think inclusively rather than think exclusively. Yeah. Had it been all Muslim, uh, Sikhs, then somebody would come along and said, well, only the Gurus were perfect and no one else can attain that oneness, you know? Yeah. So um, they did that. But what, there was, what was really cool is, do you like music, by the way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? So our Gurus, uh, they, everything in this text is divided by music. I'm wearing headphones. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that one, get by. Everything in this text is divided by music. It's the only religious text in the world that doesn't have chapters. It doesn't have like topics or sections you can go to learn about X, Y, and Z. It's all by music. And the Gurus were musicians. They actually made musical instruments. They were, you know, they love music. Um, talented people. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, very talented people. And they were warriors as well. So they did like everything, you know, the kind of millennium man Sounds idea. Sounds like it, yeah. Yeah, no yeah. <laughs> and we should, we, we're actually told to, you know, be warriors, uh, be saints, um, be musicians. That's our kind of ideal. Um, now, uh, what the gurus also did, so when you go to a Sikh temple, you see people bowing down to the text and singing the words from the text. But what you'll also see is like, there's two parts of a temple. Um, the prayer hall, and then you'll have this part, which is the, the, the free kitchen. So anybody is welcome to a Sikh temple and to have a free meal. Yeah, actually, I, I knew that as well, actually, because uh, my one f I had this friend who I met tree planting. He uh, hitchhiked uh, from Ontario, Thunder Bay, all the way out here to Vancouver. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, obviously didn't have too much money, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, he would... Uh, like go to the Sikh temple and eat. <laughs> get fed there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, it yeah, was that's, always that's like uh, a really just like inclusive thing. Yeah, yeah, we never ask anybody to convert. All we say is, look, yeah, just cover your head and come in and yeah. have some food. I mean, actually, the, from a sociological point of view, this was an institution designed to change society. Uh, it had three main purposes. The first one is that people need to learn how to serve, so that everybody that the food that's in there is cooked by by volunteers. So Sikhs turn up, go to a temple, and they want to spend like two hours cooking. You know, just want to give to everybody else. That's so, awesome. so that's like a place to learn how to serve. But also, it's a place of equality because uh, um, 500 years ago, society was stratified in India. Uh, if you had, if you were a Muslim, uh, then you wouldn't sit with the Hindus. If you were a high caste Hindu, you wouldn't sit with a low caste Hindu. So this was quite revolutionary at that time to have uh, um, a place where the rules are: you have to sit on the same uh, level as everybody else. Yeah. So no matter if you're a billionaire, if you walk into a Sikh temple, you will sit down and eat the same food as everybody else. So it's like a way of enforcing equality, yeah. but also experiencing equality because before, previously, maybe you never experienced it, yeah. you know. Um, and the third way of that is, is obviously access to basic human rights and needs, which is food. Everybody yeah. has a right to food, a right to life. 
But yeah. there's no point saying we have a right to life when people are starving to death. So the Guru's made the system where we could actually feed people for free. Uh, that's, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, awesome. basically, uh, what a Sikh wants to do is is feed everybody in the world and clothe them and make sure they're all well looked after, rather than convert them. I mean, that's our aim in, in, in the world. Yeah, Definitely nice. a good uh, <laughs> a good ideology to have around. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Well, it's not my ideology. I just follow it. Well, yeah, they made it. <laughs> fair enough. But yeah. yeah, no, it's a good one to have like being followed in this world better than some others that we have being followed, right? Yeah, I think so people have this view that we have, we have to grow. And, yeah, or, or like um, ideologies. Yes, so. yes. Or very. I think it stems from people. Prejudice to be honest, to be I mean, honest. from what I've seen of different religions, a lot of the uh, spiritual message gets lost. Yeah, it's just the way people interpret people wanna... messages wrongly yeah. and stuff like yeah, exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We have a, a YouTube channel uh, where everything that we film, like this one's going to go online, or you know, other things that we're on Facebook and Twitter. So you can feel to you know follow us up. I don't have Facebook, but uh, maybe I'll check out the YouTube channel. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, do you have any questions or any concerns you tend to have about uh, religions in general? Not because really. It's been interesting and informative speaking with you. But like I said, I'm not really religious just myself but it's always good to be informed about like the major religions of the world to yeah. uh, be that much more knowledgeable right yeah so, absolutely. No, it was interesting to talk with you Definitely. okay well, thanks for your time I appreciate no it no worries have a Thank good you. one eh? okay thanks Bye.